Hello and welcome to a video on compiling high-level code to your CL, specifically B code to your CL. So the goal is to take B code, such as what we have on the left, and turn that into your CL code like what we have on the right. Note that in this video, I came up with the method I'm going to show you is a method I came up with myself and thus it is most likely not the best method. Any other method that also works is equally just as valid as the method I'm about to show you. So there are six steps in the compilation process. First, we have the tokenizer, followed by the preprocess, then the reverse no Polish notation, then we generate your CL, followed by compiler optimizations, then finally, general optimizations. So the tokenizer takes the source code and turns it into an array of tokens. These tokens are much easier to manipulate than the raw source code itself. Then we have the preprocess. The preprocess does four things. It first resolves macros, then it checks for syntax, then it checks the validity of the identifiers, and lastly, it converts ambiguous symbols to unambiguous ones. So to resolve macros, that means things like define macros. Then we solve, we check the syntax. So we look for semicolons at the end of each line and pair a correct pairings of brackets. Then we check the validity of the identifiers. So this means that there are no invalid characters in each variable and function name. And then we convert ambiguous symbols to unambiguous ones. So for example, the minus symbol can either be a binary operand or it can be a unary operand. So by binary, I mean you have something like three minus five, and that, is, that minus symbol applies to both the three and the five. However, if you just had minus five by itself, then the minus symbol only applies to the five. That would be a unary minus. So you got binary minus and unary minus, and these translate to different assembly code. So it is important to, dis, uh, to make the distinction between these two. So if we apply the preprocess to our list of tokens, we get the new list of tokens on the right. And now for reverse Polish notation. The best way to do this is through using the shunting yard algorithm. And this gives us a form which is unambiguous and it respects the order of operations within maths functions. So if you have something like a plus b, so that would be binary plus, then you would rewrite that as a b binary plus. And you can also do the same with auto a equals three, as that would turn into a auto three equals. I won't go into details into how the shunting yard algorithm works or how reverse Polish works, and you can Google both of those if you want to find out. The shunting yard algorithm is well defined for maths equations. However, in code, there are lots of non-maths things. In B code, there are things such as the auto, if, else, while, return, there's brackets, semicolons, commas, all of these are non-maths. However, we can treat them as maths functions. So auto can be treated as a unary symbol. If, else, while, and return can all be treated as functions. Semicolon, squiggly brackets, and comma can all be treated as normal brackets. And by doing this, that means the entire code can be converted into a reverse Polish form. So now we can apply that reverse Polish notation to our list of tokens on the left, and it will give us the result on the right. And now for the most interesting part, and this is generating the URCL. So now we must turn the list of tokens into URCL code. And to use this, we use an algorithm, which I came up with, which first starts at the beginning of the array, and if it finds a variable or a constant, it skips to the next token. If it finds a math symbol, then it will append the appropriate URCL code to the output, and then it will delete the tokens that it has used. If it finds an auto keyword, 
then it will add the particular variable or function to the list of defined variables or functions, and then it will delete the auto token. If it finds a function, it'll append the appropriate URCL code to call that function. If it finds a return keyword, it will append the URCL code to return from the current function. Now if we look at a small snippet of code, which is simply auto a equals 3, we can apply our algorithm. So first we start with the a, and a is a variable. Since it's a variable, we skip on to the next token. The next token is an auto. So auto will define the previous token, which is a, as a variable. This variable is assigned to register 1, since that's the first available location and the the auto token is deleted from the list this gives us a new list of tokens then we can start again we first look at the the first token and that is a that is a variable so we skip it then we look at the next token which is a constant value of three again we skip that then we see an equals symbol this is a maths symbol so we then generate the appropriate URCL code for that maths symbol. So in this case, immediate R13. Then once we've done that, we remove the tokens from the list. And in this case, it gives us an empty list. And as soon as we run out of tokens from our list, that means we have reached the end of our algorithm. So this means that our original tokens have now been transformed into this URCL code, immediate R13, where R1 represents the variable a. Now what we can do is apply this that algorithm to our code and that gives us this result which contains the immediate r13 from before as well as a few more instructions. Note that the multiplication happens before the addition. This is because the reverse polish has ordered the operations such that the multiplication happens before the add, and this means it is respecting the order of operations. So then our original code turns into this URCL code, where register 1 is represents the value A, register 2 is variable B, and register 3 is variable C. And register 4 is used as a temporary storage location for the intermediate maths value for calculating register, uh, variable C. Next, we have the compiler optimizations. These are optimizations which are done by the compiler itself, and these rely upon information that only the compiler knows, such as the location of the variables and the temporary variables. And without this information, none of these optimizations would be possible. So if we look at our code, the compiler at this point knows that register 4 is a temporary va uh, variable and that it also knows that register 3 is not being used until after the temporary variable is used. So what this means is that the code can be optimized a little bit. Specifically, what we can do is we can take register 4 and turn it into register 3. Since when register 4 is being used, register 3 is not being used. And what this means is that our code previously required four registers, but now it only requires three registers. And now we have the final step, which is the general optimizations. These are optimizations which are done by an external optimizer program. This program is separate to the compiler, so it doesn't know anything outside of the code which is passed to it. Again, looking back at our code, the first general optimization we can apply is reading registers which have had an immediate value assigned to them. This produces the code on the right, where the we were once reading from registers 1 and 2, however we can replace that with the immediate values which would otherwise have been assigned for two registers 1 and 2. 
Then we can take our code and do something which is called constant folding. This is where the output of a an instruction can be predicted at compile time. Most notably, the multiply instruction here is simply multiplying two constant values, 3 and 5. These multiply to get the constant 15. What this means is that we can replace our mult instruction with an immediate instruction which puts the value 15 into register 3. This gives us the code on the right. Then we can apply the reading registers which have had an immediate assigned to them optimization again. And this gives us this code where we have replaced reading register 3 with the immediate value of 15. Again, we can now apply the constant folding optimization. Since we are adding 3 to 15, that will equal 18, which means we can turn our code into an immediate value of 18 being assigned to register 3, which gives us the code on the right. Now we can take our code and optimize registers that are overwritten before they are read. What this means is that register 3, since it is overwritten before it gets read, we can delete the initial instruction which writes to register 3. This gives us the final code of immediate R13, immediate R25, and immediate R318. We can then add the header information and a halt at the end of the program, which gives us the code on the right. And what this means is that we've taken our B code, our initial B code on the left, and we have converted it to the URCL code on the right. And this is the fully optimized URCL translation of this code. That's everything that I wanted to say in this video. Do feel free to join the URCL Discord. The link is on the screen and the link is also in the description. And with that, cheerio.